Hi, this is Phil Hinton for AVForums.tv and this is our video summary of the Samsung UE40 B6000 LED LCD TV. The first thing that will hit you with this TV is just how slim it is because it uses LEDs to illuminate the backlight and like CCFL backlights on normal LCD TVs, the thickness of the panel width can be reduced quite substantially. And the design of the TV is also very fetching with Samsung's crystal TV look that has a touch of light ruby colour towards the edges of the bezel. The tabletop stand that is included with the TV out of the box continues this design with a see-through panel holder. So even though the panel is so slim, it's still a TV with Freeview and analog tuners built in. But let's be clear, you don't watch TV because it's slim though, do you? After all, with this new technology and design, image quality, as always, will make or break this TV. Around the back we have four HDMI connections. However, there have been some changes for hooking up devices using SCART or component cables. Samsung do not have any physical SCART or RCA type plugs available on the back of the TV. Instead, they use breakout cables which plug into the set using a 3.5mm jack at the TV end with female connectors of the SCART or component inputs at the other. This is quite a unique approach to solving this particular issue, although the actual breakout cables are not the highest quality items we have ever seen. There's also a USB port for connecting a hard drive, iPod or digital camera and the inbuilt media player will allow you to play back photos and music files through the TV. However, I also have to point out at this stage that the built-in speakers on this TV are just not up to the job. They sound tinny and abrasive with plenty of distortion, so an outboard home cinema amplifier and speakers really are a must. Rounding off the package we have the TV remote, which is a rather large piece of black plastic. All the controls are well laid out in a somewhat logical manner, but there are some function buttons that do feel out of place, like the EPG button placed near the bottom of the remote. The actual plastic body is also a weird shape, and it has what looks like a hook at the bottom end of the unit. I've no idea why it's there, but it may stop it falling down the back of your sofa. So, moving on to performance, the EPG menus for digital TV is well designed and laid out. One is a full channel list function under the guide button on the remote control and the other is a mini menu accessed by pressing the info button. The main menus on the TV are well designed and intuitive to use with plenty of picture options available. Samsung have to be congratulated for the full calibration controls on offer with not only full white balance grayscale controls but also a useful CMS system. And as this TV uses LED edge lighting, there are a number of settings for the auto dimming system. But although these can be defeated, the actual dimming feature is on all the time and it cannot be switched off as it's part of the technology behind the image. So with everything set up in the best out of the box settings, the results from the B6000 were mixed at best. The grayscale result was disappointing with red energy well under the mix. However, the color gamut in auto mode certainly seems to work well. After several hours of calibration, the results obtained certainly look good with the grayscale now tracking as well as we could expect with the dimming system. And the CMS allowed us to bring the colour points towards Rec 709 and although not perfect, the results were more than acceptable. Overall, I was happy with the results obtained from my calibration, however some issues do add to inaccuracies within the image. The main culprit is the auto dimming system for the LEDs and not only its effects on the grayscale and gamma but also the screen uniformity issues that are blatantly obvious with low light scenes. This is an effect of using edge LED technology as it's very difficult to illuminate the entire screen surface with the same amount of light. As you can see here, with this sweep from 0 to 30 IRE that's complete black to 30% luminance. Even switching off all the likely options that would affect the dimming on the TV and even in the service menu, it doesn't switch it off completely. It's part of the technology that makes the LED edge lighting work. As you can see here with the test pattern, the outside white lines should remain stable at full luminance levels, while the centre pattern flashes. As you can see, the auto dimming affects this and the lines are dimmed. 
Moving to our calibrated settings also introduced a very strange effect with the colour points we had set correctly. It would appear that the amount of fluctuations with the luminance and gamma, the images also introduced issues with colour balance. Skin tones that should now be natural and well resolved still appear to be oversaturated and red in appearance. And even colours like the yellow bass in the dark night are too strong and look over processed. Indeed, even though we attained the calibration results in the graphs we've shown you, the actual on screen performance of the set seems to either completely bypass them in real time, or more likely, the TV with all its trickery and processing lacks a uniform ability to resolve colour energy at the correct levels. This is very strange. At the end of this scene, with the buses, there is a change to a dark scene. You can see the auto dimming overriding the image on the right. This is also shown again as the man walks away from the car, the luminance rises and the gamma is also affected. So does this affect the on-screen images to an extent that will ruin the picture quality? Well, that all depends on the individual and what they want to obtain from their LCD TV images. If you're looking for perfect reproduction of film and broadcast material as it's intended to be shown at D65 and Rec 709, then no, this TV fails to perform as it should. However, being honest, I'm sure that the slim design, vibrant and occasionally slightly overcooked images, along with good picture processing and scaling, will mean that the B6000 finds quite a few new homes. Its pushed colour performance and black levels in a bright living room might not be as obvious or critical for those who just want a nice looking TV with a bright picture. In terms of uniformity, colour balance and intensity issues along with the auto dimming gamma and black light cheating, I just can't bring myself to recommend this for enthusiasts or videophiles who want the very best images at home for critical viewing. In terms of performance against other LCD TVs, the B6000 stands up in an acceptable manner for comparative picture quality with good SD quality in terms of scaling and looks sublime in terms of design. So it's a mixed bag and certainly a screen to divide opinions. And that wraps up our video summary of the UE40 B6000 from Samsung and thanks to directtvs.co.uk for supplying the review sample. You can read the full review by pointing your browsers to avforums.com forward slash reviews. Thanks for watching.